Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we are here on this Saturday uh, in Ordinary Time, but also on this day when we celebrate St. Camillus de Lellis, uh, St. Camillus who founded this uh, religious order, the now known as, after him, the Camillians, uh, which really becomes the origin of the Red Cross. This was their habit where they had this red cross right on the center of it. And it's the same symbolism and this same uh, mission that he took up of caring for those who were in need and especially caring for those I mean, who were in, um, in war-torn areas or in, in militaries that becomes part of the mission of uh, the Red Cross. So we uh, ask him for his intercession this morning for hearts that are open to uh, loving those, especially those who are afflicted by war and by violence, and all those who are ill. This morning's Mass, we have the intention for uh, Joseph Skovoronek. Open-handed he gives to the poor, his justice stands firm forever, his might shall be exalted in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the priest St. Camillus with a singular grace of charity towards the sick, pour out upon us, by his merits, a spirit of love for you, so that serving you in our neighbor, we may, at the hour of our death, pass safely over to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Woe to those who plan iniquity and work out evil on their couches. In the morning light they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses, and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I am planning against this race an evil from which you shall not withdraw your necks, nor shall you walk with head high, for it will be a time of evil. On that day a satire shall be sung over you, and there shall be a plaintive chant. Our ruin is complete. Our fields are portioned out among our captors. The fields of my people are measured out, and no one can get them back. Thus you shall have no one to mark out boundaries by lot in the assembly of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof? Why hide in times of distress? Proudly the wicked harass the afflicted, who are caught in the devices the wicked have contrived. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. For the wicked man glories in his greed, and the covetous blasphemes he sets, sets the Lord at naught. The wicked man boasts, he will not avenge it. There is no God, sums up his thoughts. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, and deceit. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He lurks in ambush near the villages. In hiding he murders the innocent. His eyes spy upon the unfortunate. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. You do see, for you behold misery and sorrow, taking them in your hands. On you the unfortunate man depends. Of the fatherless you are the helper. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. Many people followed him, and he cured them all, but he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet, 
Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I delight. I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory. And in his name the Gentiles will hope. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is always a strong theme in the scriptures, and particularly in the prophets in the Old Testament, but also it comes up again with with our Lord when uh, we hear about the things that he does, when we hear about how the prophets have referred to him, is this theme of justice, right? Justice is what is owed to somebody by right, because of some inherent reason, right? Um, it, the, small, the smallest version of this, right, if you take out a book from the library, in justice you have to return it because it is their due, right? Something that belongs to the library. You can't just take it for yourself. Uh, justice, in the way that we uh, treat one another, we offer to one another what we are owed, what we des what each one deserves because we are made in the image and likeness of God, right? So uh, an attack on a person, physically assaulting a person, uh, is an upsetting of justice because what we owe to somebody else is to treat them with love and dignity and respect. But there are many things that the, the wisdom of the scriptures and the tradition of the church tells us are encompassed under justice. But a lot of times what we do is we take that concept of justice and we replace it with charity because it makes it easier for us to ignore our obligations of justice. When we see those who are poor, um, when we see those who cannot feed themselves, when we see those who do not have housing, as is referenced here uh, in the prophet Micah, uh, when we see those who are slandered, when we see anybody who is mistreated or does not have what they need to live, it is an obligation of justice to help provide that for them. Not an obligation of charity, as sometimes now we would rather think. I think, well, maybe out of my generosity, I can help somebody who is poor. Maybe out of my generosity, I can help someone who is homeless. But that's not our charity. When we do that, we act out of our justice, which has not been given to those who are in need. There's a very radical claim that the scriptures make that the Christian tradition makes. And we can't hardly imagine what the world would look like if we actually lived justly according to the scriptures, according to the traditions of the church, according to the laws of God. The scriptures uh, and the tradition will tell us, right, that if we um, have extra clothing, for example, uh, if I have an extra coat that I'm not using, that is of no use to me, maybe it just sits in my closet, right? If I have that extra coat, then it is a matter of justice, not of charity, that I should get rid of it from myself and give it freely to somebody who doesn't have one. That's what we're talking about when we talk about biblical justice. And what happens when this is not lived out? The prophets tell us over and over again, there will be uh, a punishment that happens, there is some evil that happens to those who do not live justly. And so, Certainly, at the very least, if we are not yet willing to truly convert our hearts and love our neighbor, if we don't have that kind of perfect love for justice, then we can have this imperfect love, which is the love that says, okay, well, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what might happen if I don't live justly. And either one of those things is the beginning, um, but really the ultimate thing here is to live in the way that Christ has lived, right? Not in this uh, kind of revolutionary in the sense of a violent revolution sort of way, but in a quiet way that simply lives out this justice that God asks of us. Not necessarily calling attention to ourselves, uh, you know, as, as the scriptures say of Jesus, right? He will not contend or cry out. They will not hear his voice in the streets, a bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench. And yet, somehow, when early Christians and Christians throughout the centuries, and that includes St. Camillus, who we celebrate today, when they lived out truly the justice of God in caring for others, 
That's when people took notice. That's when hearts began to be changed. That was their crying out and contending in the streets, was being these living examples of the love of God. So we ask for that grace that, excuse me, we do not confuse uh, justice and charity in our own lives, but also the grace that we need to really live out this justice and to live out God's charity. Together now we bring our prayers and petitions before our loving God and Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for our Bishop, Cardinal Supich, that they may always help us to understand the teachings and traditions of the Church and see how to live them out today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our civil and government leaders, that they uh, may enact laws and uh, enforce them in such a way that is really in accord with God's justice, the only true justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, uh, especially all those who are, have been sick or injured in war or in violence, may they know the healing touch of the divine physician and the compassion of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially those in our own family and friends, may they see God face to face in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joseph Skovronek, who we remember at this Mass, and for all those intentions that we hold within our hearts, or for any intentions that you'd like to share by typing them into the comments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God and Father, hear the prayers we bring before you this day, and answer them according to your will. For we make them in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed Camillus, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Dear Spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. And you're welcome to do that as well by exchanging words of peace uh, in the comments here on the video. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another, says the Lord. <clears throat> we offer now this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Camillus, who honored you with tireless devotion, and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, this weekend, uh, we have our uh, our new associate pastor who's beginning with us, Father Louis Mboe. So he will celebrate the uh, 5 o'clock Mass uh, at Queen of the Rosary tonight on Saturday. And then he will celebrate, I believe, the 1230 tomorrow at St. Julian. Uh, and then I will celebrate uh, tomorrow morning the uh, 830 at St. Julian and the 1030 at Queen of the Rosary. Uh, also today, we have uh, our first group of... Uh, children who are going to be receiving their first communions uh, that will be at St. Julian's this morning. So continue or so keep them in, in your prayers um, that they will, you know, hear the word of the Lord in their hearts and in the hearts of their families to have this love for Jesus Christ continue to grow within them and that they continue always to know the love that he has for each one of them, especially shown in this uh, sacrament. What's not so important is First Communion, right? But it's Second Communion, Third Communion, all the way up until your Last Communion. Those are always the important ones. The first is a nice milestone, but it's the beginning of our journey. So keep them in prayer. As far as Mass schedules for the coming weekends, uh, I, we will work at expanding those, probably uh, from four Masses, which we're doing this weekend, to maybe in a couple weeks, I think, to six Masses on a weekend. But that will depend entirely on our ability to uh, staff those masses with volunteers, ushers, greeters, and especially cleaners. Uh, really all the, the different services and all the different things that we would like to do to continue to have, uh, times for adoration, times for confession, all of that is dependent on volunteers. Uh, so I ask you to reach out to our parish offices um, if you are interested in volunteering so that we can have uh, more and more of an expression of these sacraments in our lives. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful morning.